We are fishermen, not fighters. You are disciples of the Nazarene. We are. Once the Romans realize your message remains a threat, they will root you out. Live by the sword and you die by the sword. This Jesus cult grows stronger by the hour with the sole aim of challenging us all. That was a portion of the preview for the upcoming television miniseries A.D. The Bible Continues, which of course is a sequel to The Bible, which premiered back in 2013. Welcome back to America's Forum. Now, A.D. picks up where the Bible left off, taking us through the aftermath of the crucifixion of Jesus, and it is set to air, quite fittingly, on Easter Sunday. For more on this story, we're very pleased to be joined by the chairman of the Christian Film and Television Commission, Dr. Ted Baer, Skyping in from California. Uh, Dr. Baer, it's been about two years since the Bible aired, and there were over 13 million viewers watching its debut. Are we seeing a rebirth of faith-based films and television series? Well, there are many ways to look at it. You know, we, we can, one, see uh, God's hand moving in the whole process. On the other hand, uh, we've seen uh, big bursts of uh, biblical movies, Christian movies, movies about Jesus. Every, uh, uh, what, they, what Walt Disney used to call the golden cycle. So if you look at 1897 and 98, there were a flood of them. Now you're not looking at 1897, 98, I know that. Then there were a flood of them in the 20s, and then uh, you know, you had King of Kings, the Ten Commandments, and Cecil B. DeMille did most of those, and then he remade those movies in the 50s, when you had Quo Vadis and Ben-Hur and all of that, actually those were Cecil B. DeMille movies that he remade. And then you had another flood of them. When I did The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe on CBS television in 1980, you also had Jesus of Nazareth, the Jesus film which saved Warner Brothers from bankruptcy. And now we have another flood of them. So they go through little cycles. Uh, the good news is that this time that cycle is very healthy. We've shown Hollywood they can make more money uh, by making movies with faith and values. Every week, about 140 million people go to church, and only about 20 million people go to movies. So this is a gigantic audience. It's actually the biggest audience out there. My wife's Argentine. That's a big audience, but it's only about 20 million of the moviegoers. And then if you take the African American, any other audience is much smaller than the church audience. So Hollywood has discovered this. And the good news is that Mark Burnett is a strong believer We've been with him several times. We talk to him all the time. And um, he's just a very strong believer and a good person. Well, speaking of Mark Burnett, Dr. Barry, he sat down with our good friend Newsmax contributor Larry Elder. Let's take a listen to what Mark had to say about the impact of these faith-based entertainment vehicles on Hollywood. I feel, and I've always felt, that... Um, too many Hollywood decisions are made upon what people in, uh, you know, Manhattan or Beverly Hills might want to watch. And I think what we've seen, certainly with country music, um, certainly my wife saw for many years on Touched by an Angel, I saw with Survivor, uh, we've seen with American Sniper, the Bible, AD. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Bear, is there a divide between Hollywood elites and, and the rest of the country? Well, Mark is probably the best uh, marketing person that I know. He's, he's absolutely wonderful. But Hollywood is a very complex institution, much more complex, let's say, than the uh, uh, news media, but uh, almost as complex as the church. So let's say if we look at last year with patriotic movies, the biggest movies that came out last year were patriotic movies. Captain America, gigantic movie. Hunger Games, one of the biggest movies of the year. Um, American Sniper, which just cleaned up after the end of the year, Guardians of the Galaxy, all of pro-American patriotic movies about individuals who fight against tyranny, fight against socialism, fight against communism. The average patriotic movie did about 76 million at the box office, uh, and the average anti-patriotic movie did about 11 million. So underneath Hollywood, you know, I guess most people, when they look at Hollywood, they look at George Looney or... <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, they, they it's okay. The You're forgiven. 
so, who makes uh, Syriana, which bombed at the box office because 60% of the movies are independent films. And when Sean Penn or George Clooney or whatever want to express their political values, they go out and make an independent film and it bombs at the box office. But if Hollywood wants to continue in business, it has to make movies with faith and values. So every year the movies with faith and values, let's say, do six to seven times more at the box office. Christian filmgoers buy 2.7 tickets a year. The average filmgoer buys 1.7 tickets a year. Church gets 40 million people every week, and that's down, so we know that it's not as good as it was 20 years ago. But Hollywood only gets 20 million people a year, so that you still have five to six times more people to go in church. You still have them buying more tickets at the box office, and therefore you see constantly movies with positive faith and values. Last year at this time, you had three big movies that came out that did incredible profits, and all of them, Heaven is for Real, Son of God from Mark Burnett, and God's Not Dead, the biggest profit-making movie of the time, um, that all of them had strong biblical content. Let me ask you, we touched a bit on the politics of Hollywood, and there's been talk that conservatives essentially are underground out in Tinseltown. Don't hear a lot from conservatives. I'm interested in, in the Christian community in Hollywood. Is there a thriving Christian community in the Southern California entertainment industry? Well, there's a thriving Christian community and there's a thriving uh, conservative community, of which includes a lot of Christians. You know, we're not supposed to talk about it, but Gary Sinise and John Boyle started an organization, oh, well, maybe seven or eight years ago, and there were three of them sitting around a table talking about, oh, no, we're Republicans in Hollywood. This is terrible. we got to whisper. And then it grew to about 3,000 people, and some of them were the heads of Paramount. Some of them were heads of Fox. Some of them were the top people. And then when we do our big gala in Hollywood, this time Stevie Wonder came. We had some of the top studio heads. Studio heads got up on stage and just thanked us for awarding movies with faith and values. You know, I could talk about uh, big Christmas parties I go to for an Orthodox Christian, uh, Jim Giannopoulos, who's the head of Fox. I could tell you a lot of stories, but you know, I think within the church, uh, we have a different motivation. These are people who are making movies, uh, and Jim Giannopoulos at his Christmas party said that Son of God would really help their bottom line, and Fox ended up number one and all that stuff. So but you can do good and do well, but it's based on belief. And Dr. Bear, I just want to point out the new cover of Newsmax magazine has a story right. on the upcoming miniseries, A.D., The Bible Continues. Dr. Ted Bear, as always, we appreciate your insights. Look forward to having you back, and America's Forum will continue after this.